السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي الله أكبر الله أكبر لا الحمد لله الذي جعل خير اللغات لغة بني إسماعيل فأنزل بها كتابه العزيز على قلب محمد بنزول جبرائيل وجعلها لسان أهل الفراديس يوم تنصب الموازين لوزن المثاقيل والصلاة والسلام على من جاء بالدين الحق فأبتل الأباطيل وأظهر الحق وجاه والتواغيت وكشف الأضاليل وصدع بالتوحيد وأسحق الشرك وهتم التماثيل وعلى آله الغر الأتحار السادة البهليل أهل التقل برالي محيي الليالي بالصلوات والترتيل وعلى أصحابه الذين علت همهم بتزكيات القرآن الأكليل الممدحين من قبل في الزبور والتوراة والأناجيل وبعد يقول الله تعالى في كتاب الحكيم بعد أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam on this sacred day of Jumu'ah how are your hearts after Ramadan dead tainted purified inspired motivated broken repaired healed i ask you by allah how is your heart this was my 12th ramadan since becoming a muslim in 2013 and i examine my heart and i think to myself what did this ramadan do for me I look around at this audience, I see some of you. Even the young amongst you have as many if not more Ramadans than me. The gray amongst you, 20, 30, 40 Ramadans, 50 even. How are your hearts? How do you feel? I heard several khutb, several sermons on Eid, where the general message was the good that you did in Ramadan, keep going. Does that sound familiar? You hear something like that? This khutbah is not for that person. This khutbah is for the person who scraped through Ramadan barely getting through work and fasting. This is for the sister whose routine was disrupted time and time again trying to get her fasting going. This is for the brothers and sisters who could not find the spiritual fortitude to make it to Tarawih every night. Least of all to stand for all 11, 13, or 20 plus raka'at. This khutbah is for the one who finds their heart broken after Ramadan. Praying to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jalla for one more, for a chance to be better. And it behooves me as your brother in faith to give you a reminder that inshallah will spark your heart for the next 167 hours until by his decree we come together again. So the title of today's khutbah is Don't Look Down. Don't Look Down. The leader of condescension, the imam of arrogance is none other than that being that had been alive longer than any human being, and that is al-Shaytan al rajim He is the master of looking down on others. Ana khayrun minhu. I'm better than him. That's how he saw our father Adam. My khalq and his khalq. My creation and his creation, not the same. I'm built different. How dare I be asked to prostrate to such a thing made of dirt and mud. When I'm made from the edge of a smokeless fire, I'm more powerful, more intelligent, have lived longer, have done more. The leader of looking down on others is none other than Iblis. And I want you to keep that in your mind as I walk you through the Quran and the Sunnah and every reason to never look down on anything, starting with the Book of Allah. Thoban narrated and Qatada ibn Nu'man narrated and our mother Aisha even narrated these many ahadith that you hear about Surah Al-Ikhlas, the 112th chapter of the Quran. Many of you have been reciting it since you were knee-eye. How a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that it is equivalent in its weight, in its value, in its meaning, in its lessons, in its sincerity to a third of the ayat in the book of Allah subhana. Do you know how we know this beyond the hadith? Do you know why a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out of his way to tell the sahaba, don't look down on this surah? Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, the hadith collected by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad, 
He said that the Sahabi came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, you know, I always hear my neighbor praying. Every time he prays, he reads Surah Al-Ikhlas. Saying it as if he was looking down like it's not enough Quran. It's so little. It's not very much. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that that surah is equivalent to a third of the Quran. Qatada ibn Nu'man and Musnad of Imam Ahmed. He said that there was a man who used to always recite Surah Al-Ikhlas in his salawat out loud. In Qiyam. Where normally people try to read as many ayats as humanly possible. He just reads Surah Al-Ikhlas. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, do not look down on that. It's equivalent in weight to a third of the Qur'an. Our mother Aisha radiallahu anha tells us about a Sahabi who was made the emir over a troop of soldiers amongst the Sahaba, a high honor. That means he understood Quran and it means he understood Sunnah and he understood fiqh sirah. He understood how to apply religious rulings, hence his station of leadership. But despite all the Quran he knew, after every single time he recited Quran, he would always add at the end of it, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, all the way to the end. Lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakufa, wa lam yakufa, wa lam yakullahu kufu an ahad, kufu an ahad, kufu an ahad. They said this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every time he recites, he always brings this surah. He knows so much Quran. Why just ikhlas all the time? The Prophet ﷺ asked the Sahaba, go ask, why is he reciting this surah so much? The man said, I love this surah. It tells me the attributes of Ar-Rahman, the owner of mercy. The Prophet ﷺ told him, Allah loves you. Not us reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas to make our salawat shorter. Not us reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas because of laziness, not wanting to review, but holding on to something from Allah. It's nothing small. There's nothing little about that. You may have gone through this month of Ramadan and had Quran goals, but do you have Surah Al-Ikhlas? Then hold on to it and do not look down on that. My brothers and sisters who memorize more than that, and forgot a lot and never found the time to review or add more. Do not look down on that surah that Allah has decreed you recite so often. Do not look down on what Allah had blessed you with by way of the book of Allah. Jeff Bezos with $600 billion does not have surah al-ikhlas in his heart, on his tongue. LeBron James can run fast and jump high, but that means nothing when it comes to not having surah al-ikhlas on his tongue. Do not look down. We think people who have all the wealth and all the power in this world are the ones to be looked up to. But for all that wealth and all that power, they do not even have a fraction of what Allah has blessed you by way of his book. Just in Surah Al-Ikhlas, do not look down. And it continues even further than that, my beloved brothers and sisters. Don't you know that the people even look down on the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Surah Zukhraf, they asked the question, why not one of the greater people from these better cities? It could have been anybody from Mecca and Ta'if. If it had been someone a bit more prestigious, if it had been someone a bit better, someone with greater lineage, greater wealth, greater power, then it would have been easier, the people of Quraysh rationalized, to follow them. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Qasas, chapter 28, verse 68, وَرَبُّكَ يَقْلُكَ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَقْتَالُ he is the one who creates. He is the one who chooses. It's not your call. If that's the case for the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where people looked down on him and said, there's other people that if they were given the nabuwa, if they were given the risala, if they were made prophets and messengers, we would have followed them more easily. Anyone but him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no, wallahi, no. Don't look down. Do not look down on those whom Allah chooses over you. There are things that you inevitably have that they do not have. And if you feel that the example of the Prophet ﷺ is too tremendous, 
Then what about that noble Sahabi Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, Imam Ahmed in his Musnad, he tells us a story of, 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 of Ibn Mas'ud, he's climbing a tree to collect some miswak. And a wind blows and his stove comes up and they see that he has very skinny legs. He's not a gym bro. He's not a fitness bro. He's not as strong. He's not as built as some of the other companions. He does not have the height and the power of Umar ibn al-Khattab. He does not have the fortitude of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He is not like az Zubair ibn al-Awwam. He is not built like them. So they laughed at him. Like the endemic and pandemic of bullying that exists in every single Islamic and Hiv school. They laugh at that kid whose stove is wrinkly too high whose abaya is a bit torn, whose hijab is not shavan material. They laugh at you for not having this type of car, this type of home, keeping up with the Joneses, the Shahs, the Ahmeds. They laughed at Abdullah ibn Mas'ud too. They bullied him in that moment too. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became upset. What are you laughing at? What's so funny? Sahaba said, we're just laughing at his little shins. He's just got small legs. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, don't you know that those legs weigh more than Mount Uhud? Do you know why Mount Uhud is called Uhud? It's because it's many mountains made into one. So Mount Uhud is not just a single mountain, it's many mountains compiled into one. So when you get ejr, reward, equivalent to the weight of Mount Uhud, it's like many mountains in one. Wallahi, your wife might not look like those people on social media. Your husband might not talk like Sheikh Fulan so and so. But do not look down on them. You may not have a lot of this. You may not do a lot of that. But in the sight of Allah, regardless of your physique, regardless of your job, regardless of your station in society and community, don't look down. What does this have to do with the state of our hearts beyond Ramadan? How can we leave here today inspired to not follow the path of shaitan? Insha'Allah we will discuss that and more in the second part of our khutbah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Some of the mu'akhireen, the scholars of Islamic history, they say that shaitan was able to reach the ranks of the malaika, of those beings of light that never fail to obey Allah, because for eons, there was not a space in the known multiverse, except that shaitan found a way to do sajda in every single one of those spaces. So many sujood. He felt empowered by that worship. And then when Allah asked him to do one sajda, he couldn't do it. Many of us have come from a spiritual, religious culture of looking down on some acts of worship, of looking down on some types of people, of looking down on some types of service. There are kids in the back playing on their phones and stuff right now in Jumat. 
they've been raised to think that this is something light, that they won't be asked about this on the day of judgment. The khatib, we stand up here, we can see all of you pulling out your phones, talking to each other. The only reason why I say something is because I care. I'm not saying they don't, but I'd be a fool not to warn you to not look down on these sacred moments. We spend all year looking down on Jumar. Like it's just a thing to do. You just come and sit. Now, brothers in the back, you may not care. You don't have to be here, you can leave. Your Jumar might as well be invalid. You might as well find a different shift to go to. At least shut up. Jazakumullah khairi. I'd be embarrassed too. If we can't tell it like it is, who will tell us? If we can't be honest with each other, who will be honest with us? Who? We've created a culture where we just look down on so much. We leave a lot of hasanat on the table. And it causes a lot of good work to be invalidated as a result of it. The same way shaitan had eons of sujood invalidated by leaving one sajda. And that hatred, unfortunately, many of the children of Adam have inherited for the commands of Allah, for the creation of Allah. Ahbab, listen to these numbers. 30,000, 70,000, 2 million. 30,000, 70,000, 2 million. Do y'all know what these statistics are? 30,000 of our brothers and sisters in Philistine killed. 70,000 of them wounded. Two million of them no home. 30,000 slaughtered like animals like their lives have no value, looked down upon, 70,000 injured, with no aid and support going to them, looked down upon, two million looked at as people who do not deserve to have a home, a place to live, a place to be. When these videos and images invade your Facebook algorithm, your Instagram algorithm, your TikTok algorithm, when it invades your Instagram reels, when, when these things hit you, you say, La ilaha illallah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Allahu musta'an. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Wa subhanallah al-azim. Astaghfirullah. 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 When you see the mothers holding their dead children, the children mourning over their dead parents, when you see the fathers losing their entire family and still having to look in a camera and say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It softens the heart. It teaches you in that moment by Allah's decree in the most desensitized era of humanity to not look down on people. But then you take that energy and when you turn off your phone screen, you then go look down at your wife. You then go look down on your husband. You look down on your father. You look down on your mother. Look down on your children. Look down on your brothers and sisters here. Wallahi ikhwan wa akhwat. Allah had chosen us to be alive in this era to see these things for a reason. Do not let the hypocrisy of shaitan looking down on the creation invade your system as he's become unchained. Where you mourn for your Palestinian brothers and sisters being slaughtered abroad, may Allah hasten the success to them, say ameen, while looking down on the blacks in your congregation. Looking down on the Arabs, looking down on the Daisies, 
on the Africans, on the converts. Is this nothing more than a proof against us? That we look up to some people and we honor and elevate some people, but the ones that the most honorable, Akram al Akramin, Al Akram al Kareem, Azza wa Jalla, wrote into your lives, your parents, they may not get it the way you get it, but how dare we look down on them? Your children don't have the intellect that you had to have when you were a child, they don't have the same strength that you have. You worked hard to give them privilege, so they're privileged. But don't look down on them. Your wife may not look like she did when you first married her. Your husband may not be the same way he was when you were doing the scouting process. But how dare you look down on them? Ikhwan, how dare we look down on each other? When Ramadan puts us all at the same level of hunger and thirst, all our feet hurt in Qiyam. It sucks to wake up every single time for Zahur. Putting your foot in a sink at 5 o'clock in the morning is never easy. And we don't do it for each other. We do it for Allah. So how can you look down on someone who's doing the best they can for the sake of Allah? How? Ikhwan, there's no action item. There's no walk away and go do this. Let these words penetrate your heart before you depart. How many janaas, how many funerals were there in Ramadan? How many died before Ramadan? How many have passed away in just these short days after Ramadan? Before you go, at least, at least, for all of the deficiency you see in your worship and your knowledge and your service, at least do not look down on people. Give salam to the brothers that you know and the sisters that you don't know. Be kind to each other. Wallahi, ahbab, we're literally all we have. No amount of voting and no amount of tweeting and retweeting and Xing, whatever they call it. No amount of that is going to change the fact that Allah shows us every single Jum'ah, your ummah is right here in this room with you. We are our greatest resource. Our families are our most precious gems. Do not look down, Ahbab. We ask Allah to give us the strength. We ask Allah to forgive us our shortcomings. We ask Allah to have mercy on us. May Allah have mercy on the departed. And may Allah give strength to the living. We seek refuge in Allah from our open enemy, Shaytan. And we ask Allah to give us the strength to overcome his plots. We seek refuge in Allah from the plots and schemes of shaitan's agents amongst mankind. Any difficulties that any single one of you are going through, I ask Allah to remove it. If you're going through financial difficulties, may Allah open a way for you. If you're struggling in your health, may Allah cure you. If you have marital conflict, may Allah place sakina mawadda and rahmah in your home. If you're struggling as a parent to raise your children in this society, we ask Allah to give you the wisdom of Luqman. We ask Allah to give you the patience of Nuh. Ikhwan, it's not easy. This dunya is not meant to be easy. But we can do it together. So let's pray together. Allahumma gfir li muslimina wal muslimat, wal mu'minina wal mu'minat, faqimi salat. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
thing. Come close to each other, don't become divided. Close the gap, sisters too, no space between your shoulders. Come close to each other, you always close the gaps towards the middle of the song. Pray this prayer as if it were your last. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وربك يخلق ما يشاء ويختار ما كان لهم الخيرة وسبحان الله وتعالى عما يشركون وربك يعلم ما تكن صدورهم وما يعلنون وهو الله لا إله إلا هو له الحمد في الأولى والآخرة وله الحكم وإليه ترجعون الله سبي الله الله أكبر Allah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Oh, 
لكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم الله سبي الله لمن حمله ربي الحمد الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Just straight from the heart. Uh, beautiful. Uh, I hope it's one of these. Keep your voice. I can't start it. 